This is BBC News. The headlines at midnight. The BBC stands by its decision not to broadcast a charity appeal from Gaza. BBC probably regards its duty as reflecting government policy. Almost the whole of the political establishment in this country supports Israel. Today, the BBC regularly receives complaints of bias, but nowhere is its news output more hotly criticised than over its coverage from one major news zone, Palestine. Jody McIntyre is a popular campaigner against government's cuts to education. Last year he was pulled from his wheelchair by police on a demonstration, but it was the aggressive questioning he received during a BBC interview which drew nationwide outrage. Well, I think it's clear not only from my interview, but from the BBC's coverage in general, that they have a very clear agenda of how they want to portray these issues, and more often than, than not, their agenda involves towing the government line. We are rebelling against the government, and forces loyal to the government are attacking us when we are unarmed. But the BBC would never ever report it in that way. This month, two events have brought the BBC's coverage of the Middle East under close scrutiny and not for the first time. More bad news from Israel is the culmination of research into the British media's coverage of the situation in Israel and Palestine. The BBC comes under particular criticism. At the same time, footage has emerged of the word Palestine being removed from a BBC music show. In Focus meets the academics, journalists and politicians asking the question, is the BBC biased towards Israel? And if so, is that due to internal agendas or external pressures? John Pilger launched the report More Bad News from Israel in London. The veteran reporter on the Middle East is scathing about the BBC's ability, even its willingness to produce impartial news from the region. I think what the bad news books have done has introduced absolutely searing shafts of truth into the whole debate. I, that's a BBC word, debate. It's not a debate. It's uh, understanding the machinations of great powers and the great injustice in the Middle East. After the book launch, I met Greg Philo, co-author of the report. His research found that the BBC's insistence on balance meant creating a false equivalence of military might. Something Arab Media Watch and the Palestine Solidarity Campaign also find the BBC at fault over. In your book, More Bad News from Israel, a lot of the questions about the way that the British public perceives questions on Palestine, you focus on the BBC. In your findings, did it become clear to you that the BBC has uh, a way of creating uh, misconceptions about Palestine? The BBC is the, the biggest, most powerful, most extensive broadcasting organisation in Britain. So we focused on that because we were looking particularly at what people understood. We, we were engaged in a study which compared the content of television, particularly television news, with what people eventually understood. And what we found was that the image that people were given of television news, in television news, of Palestine and, and of things like the, the attack on Gaza, for example, or the attack on the Mavi Marmara, gives a highly structured, very limited view, which tends to be simply the view of the Israelis. PSC members are demanding answers from the BBC over its coverage of military action by Israel. The Today programme on 
BBC Radio 4 is supposed to be the programme that sets the political agenda for the day and it's viewed as such by news organisations and also by politicians. So it has this you know, special responsibility to be impartial um, in what it broadcasts, you know, to be accurate as well. And yet when it comes to the subject of Palestine, it con again, it just constantly takes this Israeli viewpoint and explains things from the point of view of Israel and how things affect Israel. For instance, the unity agreement between Hamas and Fatah recently, hugely important for the Palestinians, um, an internal Palestinian political issue. And, you know, and it was Palestinian youth who helped to bring it about as well with it and the division campaign. And yet when the BBC reported on it, they, their point of view was just, what does this mean for Israel? And they took a very negative view on it. In 2006, an independent panel appointed by the BBC governors assessed impartiality in coverage of the Israel-Palestine conflict. The commission confirmed many of the Philo Berry criticisms that BBC output does not consistently give a full and fair account of the conflict. The main problem is that there is no recognition of the huge imbalance and power between this massive nuclear armed military machine in Israel and the Palestinians uh, that have suffered uh, uh, 60 years of oppression um, crammed into this little space in, uh, uh, in Gaza. And if you don't recognize that power imbalance, if you treat the two sides as though they're like you know, Manchester City and Manchester United playing football on a Saturday, you, we're impartial, we stand back, we don't take sides, then you miss some key aspects of that story. It's actually ignored its own um, recommendations made in a report which it commissioned to look into bias um, in terms of reporting on Israel and Palestine. In this report, the Thomas report was published in 2006 and it said, you know, because the BBC wasn't placing the situation in context, it was misleading its audience. And the report also said, you know, what the BBC was ignoring in its quest for balance, because the BBC says it has to be balanced on this issue, that there actually is no balance. Um, this report said you have one side which is the occupier, which is Israel, and you have another side which is wholly occupied, and you know, and that that is Palestine, and this should be reflected in the BBC's reporting, you know, and therefore, you know, you can't imply any kind of balance because there is no balance. So. None of these recommendations seem to have been put into place since 2006. It's been five years now, um, and the BBC's reporting has just carried on the same. During Israel's Operation Cast Lead, the BBC took a controversial decision that would lead to nationwide outrage and protest. Executives refused to transmit the Disasters Emergency Committee's appeal. I'm here to meet Tony Benn, former British MP who in 2009 represented tens of thousands of the British public who were outraged at the BBC's refusal to air a Gazan humanitarian appeal. 1,330 people have been killed, 460 children, 5,480 casualties, and the reason the BBC have done it is very simple. The Israeli government objected. It was an indication of the hostility uh, the BBC has shown towards the Palestinians and uh, this goes right back to the Balfour Declaration when Britain committed itself to a home for the Jews and then the Suez War and so on and uh, British government policy has been more friendly towards Israel and the BBC has reflected that view and I think also Israel puts enormous pressure on the BBC and that was one of the reasons why they didn't broadcast the appeal. Director General of the BBC, Mark Thompson, refused to allow it to be broadcast on the grounds that he didn't think it was appropriate. I don't quite know who he is, he is to decide what is appropriate or not. Um, we had a very stormy meeting with him in Parliament um, in which uh, I said to him, this is unprecedented, it's absolutely outrageous, you must broadcast an appeal by the Disasters Emergency Committee. It's a conglomeration of all the well-known charities, Save a Children Fund, Oxfam, and so on. He said, oh, no, no, it's not unprecedented. And I was very surprised. And I said, well, where's the precedent? And he said, oh, Lebanon in 2006. So I said, well, I think that rather proves my point. By the time the UK's other terrestrial channels broadcast the two-minute Gaza appeal, 
the BBC had received more than 15,000 complaints. The chair of Arab Media Watch has written more reports into the BBC's coverage of the Middle East than any other news channel. I'm going to meet Sharif Nashashibi to find out whether he thinks the BBC is impartial on issues relating to the Arab world. I think generally um, the BBC's coverage has tended to, their biggest failing is giving the Israeli narrative more prominence than the Palestinian narrative. And this is just not, not just our findings. Um, the impartiality review that they commissioned some years ago came out with the same findings that you know the Palestinian narrative was not being given enough airtime, enough text space, Palestinian deaths were not given as much reportage as Israeli deaths. Um, so this is the, the general failing of the BBC. The Glasgow University Media Group found that during the 2009 Israeli attack on Gaza, the BBC devoted more than 420 lines of text to the Israeli explanation for the bombardment, yet just 24 lines of text made any reference to the fact that the Israeli military occupies Palestinian territories or that Gaza is under Israeli siege. The BBC is sympathetic to Israel, that's what I'm really saying. And when uh, Hamas won the election that took place in Palestine, it was immediately dismissed by the BBC. And uh, so there have been a number of examples uh, that come to mind. And uh, so what interested me about the Gaza war was that it mobilised a lot of British public opinion in support of the Palestinians against what the Israelis had done. And at that moment, the BBC then decided to come out on the Israeli side. Just months later, another scandal would engulf the BBC, this time relating to the Israeli military's assault on the civilian vessel the Mavi Marmara as it attempted to deliver aid to the Gaza Strip. There was no context given as to why this flotilla needed to sail to Gaza. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza was dismissed right at the beginning by Jane Corbyn, who said they have enough food, they have enough medicine, there's nothing going on here. Um, Israel's three-week all-out assault on Gaza in 2008-2009 wasn't mentioned at all, um, you know, and yet that was something that motivated people hugely into going, you know, joining the flotilla. The attack of the Mavi Marmara, for example, the, uh, right from the beginning, uh, Channel 4 was, was indicating a, a rather difficult, different account of the origins of it, of, of how the attack had taken place, uh, suggesting that the, the Israelis had, had uh, attacked first, all kinds of things like this were, were, were quite different, really, from the BBC. The BBC adopted the Israeli narrative overall, and uh, it's quite clear that if you look at the, the, the language used by, by Channel 4, I mean, the, the, that well, they used the phrase, the Israelis went on board guns blazing, you know, so there, there was no, that was completely different from, from the way in which the BBC had handled it.